Coffee Break German, Season 3, Episode 18. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir heute? Mir geht es ausgezeichnet. Und dir, Marc? Mir geht's auch ausgezeichnet. I always love that word. One of my favorite German words, I have to say. <lacht> Sehr schön. And do you know what we're discussing today? I don't. My job is to turn up here, do all the technical bits and be taught by you, Andrea. So what are we doing today? So today we're looking at reflexive verbs. Mm -hmm. And now before you say, oh, I know already yeah. everything about reflexive verbs, um, we're going to look at reflexive verbs with a bit of a twist. So we're going to see some dative. Okay, so we definitely have covered reflexive verbs in the past, but this time we're going to look at, as you say, reflexive verbs with the dative. Are there major differences here? Yeah, one is with the accusative and the other one with the dative. Yeah, fair point, okay. <laughs> um, but otherwise they work in a pretty similar way. Yes. Okay, well, we will have a look at this and then we'll look at a conversation in which these reflexive verbs with the dative will no doubt appear. I look forward to it. Los geht's. <laughs> So, Mark, what do you remember about the reflexive verbs? Well, I think they work pretty similarly to normal verbs, if you want to call them that, but we just need the reflexive pronoun. Yes, so they are conjugated like other verbs, but they do have, as you said, a, a reflexive pronoun. And if we look these verbs up in the infinitive in the dictionary, then we will find them with the reflexive pronoun sich. Yeah, yeah? so oneself in a sense. Yes, exactly. And it's then the sich that changes according to the person that does whatever verb we're using. Yeah, of course. So one of the verbs uh, that is reflexive like this is sich erinnern. Okay, to remember. Yes, and you see now the in English, this is not reflexive at all. And there is no real semantic reason why this should be reflexive. It's just the grammatically speaking reflexive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have sich erinnern. And if uh, I ask you if you remember reflexive verbs, I would say erinnerst du dich an reflexive Verben? Okay. So if I wanted to reply to that, could I say something like, um, ja, ich erinnere mich. Ja, sehr gut. Ah, Super. Ja, sehr gut. And you said an die Reflex reflexiven, reflexiven Verben. Verben yes. So, an sie, would I say? Ja, ich erinnere mich an sie. Sehr gut, super. Ein bisschen, ein bisschen. <laughs> so, let's quickly, if we use erinnern, we can, um, maybe we can talk our listeners through the whole conjugation. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so as you said, ich erinnere mich mm -hmm. and du erinnerst dich. And then we have er, sie, es erinnert sich. Mm -hmm. Wir erinnern uns. Yep. Ihr erinnert euch. Und sie erinnern sich. Yeah, so those pronouns that we've just gone through. Mich, dich, sich. Mm -hmm. Uns, euch, and sich. Yes. Okay. So they then, when we conjugate the verb, they come after the verb. Although in the infinitive, it's sich, sich erinnern. erinnern. Okay. What happens in like the likes of compound tenses, you know, I remembered in, in the perfect? Yeah, let's look at this. So if I have remembered, ich habe mich erinnert. Yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> I remember that now. Ich erinnere mich. <laughs> Sehr gut. So ich habe mich erinnert. Mm -hmm. Genau. And then it goes on, du hast dich erinnert and so on and so forth. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What is also interesting is to look at where, uh, in using the verb clamor, where is the reflexive pronoun? Okay. I have an example here and we're looking at Franz who has not remembered his exam for an entire week. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> so Franz hat sich eine ganze Woche nicht an seine Prüfung erinnert. Right, so we've got the erinnert coming right at the end, but the sich is coming before the verb clamor, yeah? So interestingly, the also in the present tense, the the sich or the this reflexive pronoun stays in the same position that it comes after the finite verb after the conjugated verb. 
So in our previous sentence where the the hat was the, the finite verb, it's the, the one that's conjugated, Franz hat sich, blah, 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 nicht erinnert, yeah? So in the present tense, if we were to say Franz erinnert sich, straight after that yes. conjugated verb, uh, nicht eine ganze, or, or. eine ganze Woche nicht an seine Prüfung. Okay, ja. Yeah. Ja, yeah, very good. Sehr, sehr gut. Super. Okay, so all of this makes sense. We have talked about this before. We've done many exercises on, on uh, reflexive verbs and how they work. But you said that today we're focusing on reflexive verbs when they use a dative. So what's happening here? So far, we've been looking at reflexive verbs with the pronoun in the accusative. So that's mich, dich, sich and so exactly. on. Exactly. But we also have reflexive verbs with a pronoun in the dative. So let me see if I can remember this. So the dative pronouns would be like mir, dir, and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah, okay. genau, richtig. Very good. So when we look at this, uh, these dative reflexive verbs, we can look at two categories. And the first category will be maybe be a bit easier to understand because it's um, things where we do something to ourselves or for ourselves. So for example, ich wasche mir die Haare. Ah, so this is like, almost like saying, I wash to myself the hair. Yes, correct. Now, maybe I'm getting mistaken here, Andrea, but I thought you would say, if, you, if you're washing yourself, ich wasche mich. Yes, that is true. So if we just have ich wasche mich, uh, without further detail, yeah. then we would use an accusative. But ich wasche mir die Haare. Right. So when you're washing something, a part of yourself, yes. you're washing to yourself the hair. Yeah. You're washing to yourself. Die Hände, die Füße, anything. Yeah. Okay. And there are other verbs that uh, work in a similar way. And they also have to do with, uh, you know, looking after yourself. For example, uh, ich schminke mich, aber ich schminke mir die Augen. Remind me of schminken. It's to apply makeup. Okay, um, right. So ich schminke mir die Augen, but generally, if you're putting on makeup, ich schminke mich. Du schminkest dich. Ja, du schminkst dich. Du schminkst ja? dich. Okay. Okay. And uh, the rasieren, ja, yeah, to shave. Ich rasiere mich, aber ich rasiere mir den Bart. Right, so I, I shave my beard. Yeah, genau. Oder ich rasiere mir das Gesicht. Ja, I shave my face. Okay. And then one more that is maybe, or maybe a couple of more that are quite useful. And one is to uh, comb your hair. Yeah. So, kämmen, sich kämmen. And it's, ich kämme mich, aber ich kämme mir die Haare. Right, so we're seeing the same pattern again and again. Ich kämme mir die Haare. Yeah. Okay. And the last one I would like to mention is uh, Zähne putzen. Yeah, ja? ich putze mir die Zähne. Um, so I am cleaning my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. So I clean to myself the teeth. Genau. But do you clean yourself? Ich putze mich. Well, no. Here we wouldn't use putzen. I mean, human beings wouldn't, but, but a, like a cat would. Okay. All of this makes sense. And now let's look at how we can replace these pronouns. And that's what makes it a bit interesting. So when we go back to our first example, ich wasche mir die Haare, yeah, when I go to the hairdressers, then it's the hairdressers, that the hairdresser that washes my hair. So, um, and the hairdresser would say, ich wasche ihr die Haare. So there, she's saying, I wash... Her hair. Her hair. To her the hair. Yeah, genau. And then it's no longer reflexive, but it's just to show the mechanism of these reflexive dative verbs. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, so if if I was going on uh, television, I'm, I'm watching Borgen at the moment. I don't know if you've seen Borgen, the, the Danish uh, politics yeah, love show. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So whenever the prime minister, the statsminister is going to uh, TV one to appear on the the, the, the news program, yeah. um, someone always does her makeup. So would someone do the makeup to her in yes. that idea? So if I were the makeup artist, I would say, ich schminke ihr die Lippen. So you're telling me, you 
put makeup on her, you put put her lipstick on. Yeah. How would you say to the the stats minister, the the prime minister, um, I am putting your makeup on. Yeah. So here we would obviously we would use the formal you in the dative, and that would be Ihnen. Ich schmenke Ihnen die Lippen. Okay. So each time we're using a dative pronoun, mm -hmm. whether it's to ourselves or whether it's to someone else. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay. Now you said there was another category of these verbs. Yes. So let's call this other category real reflexive verbs in the dative, meaning that there is no reflexive action happening here, like in the Ich wasche mir die Haare, where I wash myself the hair. Yeah. In these real reflexive verbs with the dative, we have the similar situation as with the other reflexive verbs in the accusative, where there is no semantic reason for this verb to be reflexive, but it is reflexive. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm not quite following this, but if you can maybe give us an example, that would help. Yes. Um, I'll give you an example with an expression that maybe you've heard before, mm -hmm. and it's sich Sorgen machen. Oh, right. This is to, like, to worry about something. Genau, das ist richtig. And when I worry, I say, ich mache mir Sorgen. Right. Ich mache mir Sorgen. So, we're using mir again. Mm -hmm. Could we just run through the whole of this? So, I worry. Mm -hmm. So, ich mache mir Sorgen. You worry. Du machst dir Sorgen. He worries. Er macht sich Sorgen. She worries. Sie macht sich Sorgen. And it worries. Es macht sich Sorgen. We worry. Wir machen uns Sorgen. You plural worry. Ihr macht euch Sorgen. And they worry. Sie machen sich Sorgen. So we've gone through all of that conjugation. And what I'm noticing is that there actually only are two pronouns which change when it moves from being an accusative to a, a dative. Yeah. So, mir and dir. That's correct, yeah. That's helpful. Because yes. There's one less thing. Well, there's two fewer things to worry about. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, would you like a few more examples for these verbs? Yeah, I think that would make sense. So, one um, that I love a lot is sich Mühe geben. Right. Mühe is, help me. It's something that is tiresome and hard work, yeah? Okay. And it means, the expression altogether means to make an effort. Right. Um, so this is different from müde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> I was thinking müde, müde. Um, but sich Mühe geben. So ich gebe mir uh, Mühe. Yeah, genau. So I give myself a tiresome task. Right. Which means I work very hard mm -hmm. to do something. And so can I double check the to do something part that follows? Uh -huh. Would that have a zu in there? Ja, also, ich gebe mir Mühe, reflexiv Verben zu erklären. Okay, und ich gebe mir Mühe, reflexiv Verben zu verstehen. Ja, sehr gut, super. <lacht> ja? Okay, so that's sich Mühe geben. Give us another one. Genau, so, uh, sich vorstellen is, uh, has a similar structure. Ja, so, ich stelle mir vor... Something. So I imagine. Right. So sich vorstellen is to, to imagine then. Ja, genau. So I could say, ich stelle mir etwas vor. Ich stelle mir ein kühles Getränk vor. Ja. But also, ich stelle mir vor, am Strand zu sitzen. So I imagine myself sitting on the stand. On, on, the, on the beach. The ja, stand. genau. <laughs> genau. <laughs> on the strand. Ja, genau. Sehr gut. Super. Okay. Okay. And then we have quite an important one, which is sich etwas merken. Yeah. Right. And um, that means uh, to keep something in mind, to remember something, but actively. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, uh, I say, Mark, das musst du dir merken. Yeah. Need to keep that in mind. Yeah. Genau. Okay. And then we have one last one, which uh, is um, to to have something done in English. So, ich, I make you an example. Ich lasse mir die Haare schneiden. 
Oh, right. Okay. So literally, I let my to myself the hair be cut. Yeah, genau. <laughs> so I'm having my hair done. Ja, also ich lasse mir die Haare schneiden, but it doesn't have to be something that is related to your body. Mm -hmm. I could also say, ach, ich lasse mir die Wäsche bügeln. I, I, I have someone iron my clothes. Right. So could you have someone paint your house, for ja, example? Ja, okay. ich lasse mir das Haus streichen. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, so we've seen, first of all, a review of reflexive verbs and how they work with the normal accusative uh, pronouns. Mm -hmm. We've now seen reflexive verbs with datives, but two types. One which is, in a sense, the things that you might do to yourself, like wash or shave or put on makeup. And then also these other ones, these sort of special ones, which are real reflexives, where you're, they're more kind of figurative in the sense that it's grammatically reflexive rather than physically. Yes, so about the ones where we do something to ourselves, uh, like washing the hair, etc., you need to keep in mind, so du musst dir merken, mm -hmm. yeah, that there we have to be detailed about what exactly that we're washing or shaving or where we're applying makeup to, so the hair, the lippen, uh, das Gesicht, etc. Yeah, because otherwise they, they, they become normal reflexives in a sense with accusative. Exactly. Yes. Okay, that was quite a lot to, to take in, but I think we've got there. Um, what we'll do is, after the break, we'll have a listen to a conversation, which will no doubt feature many examples of these reflexive verbs, so we can look forward to that. Bis bald. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Welcome back. Today we are talking about reflexive verbs which use dative pronouns. And we're now going to listen to a conversation which involves quite a few of these. Andrea, tell us a little about this conversation. Yes, yeah, so we're following uh, Tim and Anna and they have a conversation about the fact that Anna didn't sleep very well because um, she went to the hairdressers and I think her hair smelled quite a bit and she struggled to fall asleep. Okay, sounds interesting. Let's have a listen to the conversation now. Hallo Anna, wie geht's dir? Hi Tim, ganz okay. Ich bin ein bisschen schlapp heute, aber sonst ist alles in Ordnung. Was ist denn los? Hast du dir die Nacht um die Ohren geschlagen und warst zu lange im Club? Nein, du weißt doch, dass ich mir nichts aus Clubs mache. Egal wie viel Mühe ich mir gebe, kann man mein Rumgewackle kaum als Tanzen bezeichnen. <lacht> also jetzt mache ich mir Sorgen. Wenn du nicht tanzen warst, weshalb bist du denn so fertig heute? Also, ich habe mir gestern die Haare schneiden lassen. Und die Friseuse hat mir so viel Zeug in die Haare gemacht, dass mir eine Duftwolke gefolgt ist. Das hat so gerochen. Ich konnte einfach nicht einschlafen. Um drei Uhr morgens bin ich dann aufgestanden und habe mir die Haare gewaschen. Na, da hast du dir aber Zeit gelassen. Das hättest du ja gleich tun können, als du daheim warst. Ja, schon. Aber mir hat die Frisur gefallen und schließlich habe ich sie mich etwas kosten lassen. Aber für die Zukunft werde ich mir merken, dass für meine Nase weniger mehr ist. Und was hast du dir denn heute noch vorgenommen? Ich will mir die neue Ausstellung dieses französischen Künstlers im Stadtmuseum anschauen. Kannst du dir vorstellen, dass die Bilder 200 Jahre in einem Keller lagen, bis der jetzige Besitzer des Hauses mal geschaut hat, was da eigentlich rumliegt? Nein, das ist ja ein Ding. Das Stadtmuseum hat sich sicher die Finger geleckt, als ihnen die Bilder angeboten wurden. Na, das denke ich mir. Sie sind aber nur eine Leihgabe und bleiben im Besitz der Familie des Künstlers. Ah. 
a bit of a strange conversation, Andrea, I have to say. Why? Has this never happened to you? Uh, no, but what I am also a little bit concerned about is whether Anna was, in fact, in Switzerland when she had her shower or her no, hair washing in the middle no, of the night. Of course not, because in Switzerland, someone would have called the police yeah, if she had washed her hair at three in the morning. <laughs> okay, we'll not go through the whole thing right now. We'll do that in our bonus episode, but let's talk a little about what has happened in this conversation. So Tim and Anna are having a chat. Yes, and Anna mentions that she's very tired. And uh, Tim wonders if it's because she's been all out uh, all night in the club. But that is not the case. Um, she doesn't like clubbing after all. Yeah, she's not so confident in her dancing skills. <laughs> uh, and then Tim is really worried now why she is so tired. Yeah, in fact, she tells him the whole story. And it seems that she went to the hairdressers to have her hair cut. And then basically the hairdresser put so much, I don't know, product, do yeah. you see that? Is that mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with this, but mm -hmm. um, so much product in her hair that, um, well, it was smelling really strongly. Yes, yeah, so much that she couldn't fall asleep. And then at 3 a.m., she finally got up and washed her hair. Yes, uh, indeed, again, hopefully not in, in Switzerland. Yes, exactly. And Tim is uh, a bit baffled. He wonders why uh, Anna waited so long to get this hair product out of her hair. Well, she liked the hairdo. She didn't. She, she didn't want to ruin it. But I think um, she'll remember that in in the future, um, less is more uh, to the benefit of her nose. Yes, indeed. Then uh, they change subject, and she asks what Tim is up to today, and he says. Well, he's off to the City Museum to see a, is it an exhibition of a French artist. Yes, and uh, this artist's paintings were lying in a cellar for 200 years. Wow. Until the owner of the building had a look. Yeah, and Anna, Anna's a little sceptical or a little cynical here, I think, maybe, um, because she says that the, the City Museum was, was licking its fingers when they managed to get those paintings for the exhibition. Yes, and Tim agrees with this, but he also points out that these paintings are only borrowed and they remain a property of the family of the artist. Of course. Okay, as I said, we'll be going through that conversation in detail in our bonus episode, which you can find at the Coffee Break Academy, coffeebreakacademy.com. That is almost it for this lesson, but there is time for noch eine Kleinigkeit. We're talking about hair also in this uh, part of the podcast. Okay. And we have a, an expression here and it's called Haare auf den Zähnen haben. Uh, right. Okay. Wait a minute. Haare auf den Zähnen haben. To have hair on your teeth. Yes. So, and we say that someone has Haare auf den Zähnen when they don't mince their words and uh, maybe they say some not so nice things. Ah, right. Okay, so if you're describing someone in this way, could we simply say, like, um, if if uh, Tim, for example, was saying something not so nice about Anna, telling someone else about her hair adventures, could we say, Tim had hair auf den Zinn? Yes, so it's definitely not a compliment. Okay, right. Okay, it's not like, wow... Uh, she speaks, you know, her, her mind, mind and you yeah. know you know exactly what she says is what she thinks. It's not this. There is no positive aspect to it, okay? Haare auf den Zähnen haben is that, that this person is not afraid to say, you know, quite ugly things. Okay, maybe. so they, 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 they speak their mind, but they do so in perhaps a, quite a negative way, yes, quite an insulting yes, way. Yes, yes. Okay, well, on that... Slightly negative note, we will finish <laughs> off just in case anyone's going to be um, mincing their words about this episode. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that you don't. We hope that you, you've enjoyed this and you've learned something. And of course, if you have, do feel free to leave us a review on your favourite podcast app. Um, you can let us know what you think of Coffee Break German uh, Season 3 for now. Uh, vielen Dank. Vielen Dank, Andrea. Vielen Dank, Marc. Und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis bald. <laughs> You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved. 